This is the same case who had presented to me with a penetrating injury and I in retained intraocular foreign body. I had removed the foreign body and also uh, repaired the corneal tear, but I did not handle the traumatic cataract though present at that time. I didn't handle it at the same setting. Instead, I opted to wait almost three weeks. Uh, and the reason for this is simple. If there is no emergency to take out the cataract at that time, I just leave it. I wait for the capsular tear edges to fibros. Much easier to go ahead and handle this cataract at that time. So as you can see, you can see the corneal uh, sutures in C2. You can also see the traumatic cataract there. And I place another incision, a 2.8 millimeter incision through the clear cornea. I attempt to go into the same side ports that I had uh, made earlier, sort of works. And then I stain the anterior capsule with tripan blue. As usual, I expel all this tripan blue as well as the air bubble by placing in, placing OVD 2% HPMC within the anterior chamber. And then with the Sinsky hook, I am separating the few sinicae that are present. See how taut the fibrosis is. Nothing happens, it doesn't extend. And from the, the tear edge, I am trying to pull it down to make a rexus. It's not working. It's so hard. You can see how hard it is. And so instead, I go with the angled oners and make a nick at the lower end of that tear. And then from that, I use my uterata forceps and fashion a crude rexus. It's pretty large rexus. It's an intumescent cataract, but luckily uh, it's not that difficult to control this capsule. Here a flap has come off, I just take it off and then I again re-hold the edge and go around. And it's almost a complete rexus. I'm very careful to decompress the chamber first and then do this hydrodissection. You have to be very careful because you really do not know if there is any extension of the posterior capsule. It doesn't look like it. With such a light hydrodissection, the nucleus itself has hydrodelineated and almost prolapsed. I tried to rotate it, but it's too soft. I put in some HPMC. I would like to rotate this out of the bag, but it is with the help of uh, two Sinsky hooks but as you can see it's just cheese wiring through. So I I know it's been separated enough it's nothing for me to worry. I take a Sinsky hook in one hand and my FACO probe and the moment I hit vacuum just see what happens. It's just very neatly almost FACO aspirates. I am hardly using any FACO power. And there is a temptation for me to take out the epinucleus with the FACO probe, but I resist it. And I opt for the longer version, but probably the more safer version as well. I use the bimanual to meticulously and laboriously remove all the epinucleus and the cortex. So obviously I will remove from the lower area first because I know that the capsule is pretty stable there. Nothing for me to worry about. I do this on the other side as well. I got most of it out. That's the danger area, that side. So, I again change hands and approach that area. And 
there's no problem for me to remove the whole thing. And in fact, I can even vacuum polish the capsule behind. Once I know the epinucleus and cortex is out, I put in HPMC and in all these cases I always opt to put a three piece eye hole. I never opt to put a single piece, very rarely do I put it. And make sure you can make sure you just dip it under the iris into the sulcus. And the eye hole is very stable. Once I have noted that, I go ahead and remove all the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. Place in my intracameral antibiotic, hydrate the wounds and conclude my surgery. Thank you for your patient watching. I would appreciate any comments or any queries that you may have. Thank you.